Coders. I'm Keilani, and I'm your host for Code Along with Black Girls Code. Today we're playing basketball. I guess what I mean is, today we're coding basketball. By the end of this episode, you'll have learned to code an awesome basketball drill game that you can share with your friends or the entire Scratch community. So what do you say? Let's get coding. Do you play any sports? Well, if you do, you know that the only way to get really good is to practice. Sometimes you may even run drills to get extra good at a certain skill. While in basketball, everyone likes to shoot the ball, but another important part of the game is rebounding. A rebound is a ball or shot that bounces back after missing the net and hitting the backboard. The player who catches that ball is awarded a rebound. So I thought it would be super fun to create a virtual drill game all about rebounding. Before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Let's start off by going to scratch.mit.edu. If you're super new to Scratch or just looking for a little refresher, you should definitely check out this video from season one of Code Along. I go over all the important Scratch basics. Check it out. Now I'm going to create a new project. You can do this by clicking on File, then New. The first thing I need to do is choose my sprite. I'll delete the current sprite by clicking the X above it in the sprite area. Then click the sprite icon, the cat at the bottom right of your screen, and go to the Sports tab. I'm going to pick Max. She looks like she's ready to play. Next, I'm going to add my backdrop. We should choose a basketball court, of course, and a game over screen. To do this, I'll click the backdrop icon next to the sprite icon. I'm going to go to the sports tab and first choose the basketball court, but you can choose whichever one you like best or even upload your own. I think I'll pick the wall one backdrop for the game over message. Each backdrop will be added to the backdrop tab where you can change the order you want them to show. Make sure the basketball court backdrop is first and the wall one backdrop is second. Let's customize the game over screen. Click on the stage area and then go to the backdrops tab on the upper left hand corner. Click on the wall one backdrop, then rename it to game over. Click on the T icon. The T represents text and all you have to do is click on the backdrop where you want the text to be and type in the words. Let's type in game over. And to improve your score, press the green flag again. Add an even amount of spacing around the words and resize the text so that it fits your screen. We can also change the color of the text with fill. Now we have a beautiful game over screen, but what about the game? I want Max to move left and right to catch the ball, so I'm going to add actions to the left and right arrow keys. Select Max in the sprite area. Then from the events tab, drag and drop a when green flag clicks block into the scripts area. Next, I'll go to the Control tab and add the IF block. The IF block is a conditional statement, meaning if this statement is true, then run the code inside. Well, if I press the right arrow, then I want Max to move to the right. In the Sensing tab, I'll add the key space pressed to the IF block. Change spacebar to right arrow, then add the Change X by 10 from the Motion tab inside the IF block. Let's test this out. Press the green flag and then click the right arrow. Does Max move to the right? No? I know why. It's because we forgot to add one more block. I need to add a forever block from the control tab to surround the if statement. The forever block runs the code on a loop forever without stopping. Every time I press the left arrow, I want Max to keep moving to the left or right. It works, go us. Now let's copy the current block for the left arrow key. Change right arrow to left arrow in the drop down menu and change 10 to negative 10. Now, Max can move in both directions. Next up is coding the shot clock. In order to keep track of time, we have to go to the variables tab, then click make a variable. Variables can be used to keep track of scores in a game, store user inputs, control different aspects of animation, and so much more. I'm going to rename my variable shot clock. Now that I have a way to store time, it's time to create my timer in code. When the green flag is clicked, the game starts. 
Go to the variables tab and grab a set my variable to block and put it under the green flag block. Change the variable to shot clock and the value to 24. Next, drag a repeat until blank block from the controls tab. This block will repeat an action until a condition is true. In this case, when the shot clock is zero. I'm going to look in the operators tab and add the value equals 10 operator to the repeat until loop. Then let's grab a shot clock variable and set 50 to zero. Excellent. So now we know that the shot clock will stop at zero. Next, we need a way to measure time. We can use the wait one second block and add it inside of the repeat until loop. Every time one second goes by, I want the shot clock to decrease by one second. So let's go back to the variables tab and add a change my variable by one block under the wait block. Then I'll update the variable shot clock from one to negative one. Now my timer is almost complete. Time to test it out. Great, we're making progress, but there's still one last step. Once the shot clock reaches zero, the game over screen should appear. Let's drag a switch backdrop to game over under the repeat loop. Our game is coming along, but now we're stuck on the game over screen. To add a restart block to max, add the following code. When we click the green flag, she'll go back to the first backdrop and reset the rebounds to zero. Now that we have our shot clock and Max can move from side to side, let's code the basketball. Go to the sprite icon and choose a basketball. I want the basketball to come from the top of the stage down towards Max. The stage is measured along the X and Y axis. Add a when green flag clicked block, then add a set variable to block below it. Rebounds come off the rim at different speeds, so let's create another variable called ball speed. I'm going to set its initial value to a negative five under the when green flag clicked block. This will move the ball down the screen towards Max. The basketballs will continue to fall towards Max until the shot clock runs out. So let's add a repeat until loop below the set speed block. The block will repeat until the shot clock turns to zero. Inside the loop, I want to add a change Y by block, then add a speed variable inside the value. Next, I want to check if the ball is below the negative 170Y coordinate because if it is, my ball is below the stage and that means Max missed the rebound. If Max misses the rebound, then I need my X value to go from a random place between negative 170 and 170 on the stage. This means the ball will go somewhere over the top left or the right of me. Then I'll set my Y value to 180. Now click the green flag. The ball should be moving towards Max and resetting itself to a new position at the top of the stage once it reaches the bottom. Well, now that I know what will happen if Max doesn't catch the ball, what happens if she does? She should get a point, obvi. When Max catches the ball, I want to add code that gives Max a point, plays a sound, and makes the ball go back to the top of the screen. To do that, we'll first add our starter blocks. Then go to the sensing tab and add the touching mouse pointer block to the if statement. Change mouse pointer to max. Excellent! Now when the ball touches max, she gets a point. Now drag the change my variable by one block inside of the if statement. Select rebound from the drop down menu and make sure the value is set to one. Let's click the green flag to test it out. I'll have to reset the balls after each one is counted, but first I want to add a sound after each ball is caught. To do this, I'll go to the sound area and drag the start sound block below the change score block. Next, select basketball bounce from the drop down menu on start sound, then reset the ball.
Let's try catching again. Press the green flag, then move Max left to right trying to catch the ball. Do you see your score go up? Does the ball reset? Do you hear the basketball bounce? Awesome, we're making so much progress in our game. I think we should add some levels to our game. If Max catches 10 rebounds, the user will move to the next level. We're turning up the excitement in the next level with faster rebounds to test your reflexes and make the game even more challenging. To do this, I'll drag and drop the green flag clicked and wait until block into the coding area. Then I want to change the ball speed to negative 10. You can create as many levels in your game as you want. Let's test out our rebounding skills. I have to double check to make sure that whenever Max catches the ball, she gets a point, and then if she gets 10 points, it goes to the next level. In today's episode, we use events blocks to kick off our project, control blocks to keep our actions smooth and ordered, and motion blocks to slide sprites across screen. Sensing blocks will detect when the ball hits the player, operator blocks will randomly reposition the ball, and variables will keep track of the shot clock time and our rebound count. The last step is to save our work. Go to File and select Save Now. Once we've saved and shared our project, let's view the project page to add the instructions, notes, and credit sections. Want to get hands on with today's code? Click the link below and start remixing. Thanks for coding with me. See you next time in the code zone.